You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Sims, the Chief Experience Officer and Exclusive Coach at Barbell Logic. With me is Andrew Jackson, the Chief Operations Officer, also Exclusive Coach at Barbell Logic. Afternoon. And you are on the Beast of Burden feed in the Barbell Logic Podcast. Thanks for being here. So we want to speak to today those people who are very busy big, full lives, lots of wonderful things to be spending their time doing. And you also want to know how to keep lifting, how to get strong. And sometimes that can feel like such an obstacle that you might even discount exercising or strength training altogether. And we see it with clients who have a big life change or clients who are really wanting to get started, but they just don't see how they can fit it into their schedule. But don't worry, if you're not, you can still be a beast. You can still train. You can still make a difference to your life with the barbell. And we have some cool strategies on how to do that. Andrew, in fact, just got off a call with a client who was navigating that that exact thing. And how did that call go? What came up? Well, the issue that he was having was, and this is common with a lot of my very dedicated, most hardcore lifters, is that We have been doing several blocks of four day split, full body workouts. You know, they kind of had creeped up to the point where they were taking him between an hour and an hour and a half. And his mental model for what workouts needed to be was something like that, which also included often pushing for a PR almost every week or every session, either a volume or an intensity PR. And he was just, really struggling with the idea of continuing to do that. His life circumstances had changed, much less time available. He was now having to train first thing in the morning. And one of the comments that he made that was most interesting to me is that he was really targeting, really prioritizing weight going up on the bar to the point that he was resting sometimes five, six, seven minutes between sets in order to hit the next weight increase. That can add up for sure. And that was really adding up the time. And then also the emotional cost and the uh, energetic cost of his workouts was getting really high because cooling down and then ramping back up after sitting for six, seven minutes was just taking a lot out of him. So what we got to was a point where we really needed to figure out how to reframe the workouts And as we've talked about a couple of different times in the last few weeks, shift the goalposts to some extent of what the goals were and how to evaluate progress so that it wasn't always just weight on the bar going up every single session or that every single session needed to have an increasing amount of work done every single time. And try to fit that into four sessions. Right, right. And that can be, you know, when someone's really busy, they look at the workout for the day and they see, you know, four things that they have to get done. And they're just like, crap, there's no way I can do that. Right. I'm so busy. I'm just going to move this to the next day. Yes. And then they're still busy. They can't get the to next it. Day. So and the next the, day, the risk is seeing this trend of it just getting exactly just kicked down the calendar. And then we end up getting a bunch of missed workouts. You feel really defeated. And, you know, that feels crummy. So what are the options instead of failure? <laughs> yeah, especially, you know, because I said he had to shift from working in the afternoon into 4.45 in the morning. Yeah. And for anybody who's had to make that shift, you just, you know that at least initially, it takes a while to get comfortable with training at a different time. And you have to adjust your expectations. The weights that were warm-up weights in the afternoon might feel like all-out effort <laughs> at 4.45 in the morning. So, you know, I think that's, Thing number one is to reframe or reset expectations based on this change. I would put that up as a variable almost as important as intensity, you know, in terms of weight on the bar or the sets and reps that you're doing. 
is the time of day that you're training or, or at least the routine that you're training. If that's changing, consider that changing a major variable. You know, that's not to say that you just need to let everything that's happening to you from day to day throw you off your game. And I definitely encourage everybody to try to show up and put everything into their their workout. But if you're going through a systemic major change in your life, I would say, first off, don't be afraid to move the goalposts or at least reset expectations temporarily until you can kind of find your groove in that new change. That might be thing number one. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of you say it as, you know, changing the goalpost. And within that, you still have to figure out like, okay, what is the most important thing to me about training? Right. Maybe that's changed a little bit. And what other options do I have than what this looks like now? Do I have to keep getting weight on the bar? Do I have to train, you know, four times a week? There are so many good ways that you can break that mold and still get work done. And it's, you know, someone who will take it upon themselves to wake up at 4.45 and go train, like you said, clearly dedicated. And there's got to be a way to make that, you know, more tolerable for the rest of their life. And what's another, I guess, strategy that came up for you? Another really important option to consider is to, rather than thinking about needing to get a certain amount of work done in the day or in the session, I spread that out over the course of the week. So especially for somebody who's got a home gym, try to see how much work you can accumulate across the week instead of just the day. And so concretely, what that has often looked like for a lot of my clients is spreading the workout over multiple days where you've only got maybe one or two exercises per day instead of having three, four, or more. You know, again, a lot of the people I'm talking to are coming from a very intense phase of training where they're really prioritizing PRs and weight going up on the bar versus a time where that might not be where they can put all of their energy. So, you know, I also, I think I've talked about a client of mine that previously who recently had his third child and was coming off a pretty intense training program. And he was saying, I don't know if I can do this, just don't have the time and energy. And I said, well, let's again, shift the goalposts a little bit. Let's reframe the expectations and the goals and try spreading it out to do just one exercise a day. And we'll also, because, you know, having a kid come in and getting zero sleep and kind of having to refigure out how to organize your life because he had a home gym, we could split it up into these small chunks. It was taking him 10 to 15 minutes at most to get through the workouts. So I did also pull the weight back a little bit at first, but we really tried to focus in on making the exercise approachable, which I think was what you were alluding to before also, and manageable into these bite-sized chunks where the priority was not always getting a ton of work done in one session, it was trying to accumulate work over a long period of time. You look at it and it feels doable. And it's probably going to be hard, but what matters is that it's doable. It was still heavy, but doable. And you can still go in and know that you got to train. Yeah, still heavy, but doable. The ultimate North Star. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, like adding another family member is huge, changing jobs, anything where, you know, you're what used to be your normal levels of recovery, both physically and emotionally, like that bucket has had another thing just kind of pulled out of it. So now you have less wiggle room in that bucket. So you have to be able to adjust the amount of work in the bucket to make sure that's even. So I like that one lift a day a lot because it's got to also be emotionally less stressful. You don't have to get as hyped up for three different things. It's okay if it's not a 1RM or a 5RM. And it sounds like that you can still get towards PRs on the one lift a day also. Yeah, this guy, his schedule is starting to solidify a little bit more. He's been able to, now he's doing on average one barbell lift and one body weight accessory. So his workouts are now up around 20 to 25 minutes. And multiple of his lifts are getting into PR territory. Dang, I bet that was unexpected. Now, I thought we were just going to like, okay, let's hold serve and let's make it so that when, in fact, I think I told him the goal for this training block is to minimize the time that it takes you to get back to PRs when your schedule gets back to quote unquote normal. I was not expecting him to be hitting PRs. That's great in expectation setting. <laughs> yeah. 
He is now three or four weeks in a row has hit a press PR, which of all the PRs, I was not especially not expecting a press, but that's been going really well. That's client option one with a home gym. Now, I also have a client who surprised me in his progress where he's got a fairly long commute. So he's alternating between one and two workouts a week. Wow. And for that, I've had to change up the goal or the priority a little bit more to emphasize making sure we do a full body workout every session. But similarly, I try to make the weights or at least the intensity of the weight on the bar to be approachable Okay, and then give him guidance on ways that he can add stress if he's feeling like he's got a little bit more room in the tank because his he's trying to over the summer he's been trying to do more outside activity more hiking more biking and so the amount of energy he has when he comes in the gym is kind of all over the place so the strategy for those is that i try to do full body workouts and keep the intensity on the lower side and give him a little bit more runway to add reps to make it harder particularly for the third set on something where he's got like three sets on a squat. I'll say, you know, do the weight for the first two. And then if you really want to, if you've got more in the tank, push it on the third set until you get to two to four reps from failure, something like that. And how's his progress going? He's at like 90% of PRs. Like it's, he's within striking distance of hitting PRs. That's great. Yeah, which that also surprised me because normally I think of training once a week of being a lot of soreness, you know, like not enough to stay connected to the lifts. It might be because he's super active outside of the gym that it's mitigating that a little bit, which that's obviously another strategy, I I suppose, would be to try to make your activity level outside the gym high to the point where you're able to get a little bit of exercise on top of when you are in the gym. Yeah. Amazing that's two different opposite ends of the spectrum. One person worked out more, one person may have worked out less, although I'm curious like what the tonnage kind of equates to, but you were able to like just spread it out in the way that it needed to be done for each person. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that. I think it's comparable tonnage actually because one guy was doing just those 10, 12 minute workouts. The other guy was more like hour to an hour and a half workouts. You know, so the one lift a guy day when he was at his his shortest period of time was only working out an hour a day. Okay. And the one full body workout a week was probably pretty comparable. And is he also doing accessories? The one who's going once a week? No. Yeah, that's a great point. The once a week guy, we had to cut out all the accessories and just focus on the compound lifts, which my rationale was that, you know, with the compound lift, you're going to get more muscle mass in the same amount of time. The one lift a day guy only started recently adding in accessories, body weight, particularly to minimize setup time as he got a little bit more time available. So that I would say is probably another strategy is that I would look for ways to make my lifts relatively more compound, meaning use more joints, more muscle mass so that you can do effectively more work in less time and also look for ways to minimize setup time. So if you are going to do accessories, look for body weight versions, you know, do the chin-ups, dips, things that don't force you to be changing out a bunch of machines or dumbbell, loadable dumbbells or or different barbell exercises that are only targeting one or two groups. Yeah, this is not the time for banded chain bench press with a slingshot. (laughs) Right, right. And I found that often by the time we get to this point where this reminds me if you're a first lifter, that people have just accrued this like long laundry list of activities because they might be coming from a time in life where it's like, that's all they wanted to do and they have the time to train. So even peeling back the accessories and the extra stuff that you've layered on could be enough to make the workout schedule far more doable. And it probably is speaking to how much more recovery they need to just by pulling those back. Totally. Probably one of the other big ones that I kind of touched on earlier was just controlling the rest time. Get the kitchen timer in the gym, set the clock, no more than three minutes rest. Stop looking at Instagram. Don't look at your email. (laughs) Like don't let yourself go down those channels. (laughs) Yeah, that's one I have to constantly work on. But you can do that if you have a timer. Yes. Or at least you can do it a little bit better. (laughs) I don't recommend it. (laughs) But at least if you have the timer going off, you get a nice reminder 
to get back under the bar. I also find that to be a good variable to control to also manage how often you add weight. If the variable that you're having to go to in order to add more weight is longer rest time, adding more weight might not be the right move for you next, you know? That's a really good point. Yeah, it could be time to change something different. Could be next time, go for a lower RPE, you know, see if you can do the same work, but less taxing with the same amount of rest time. Maybe it's add an extra rep with the same rest time and build reps for a few weeks instead of just adding weight every time to the bar. That could be another change in metrics for driving progress where you might not have as much time or focus on being able to add weight every single time. There's other variables you could try pulling. And another strategy that I've used before is picking only like two or three of the main lifts at a time where let's say you can't train every single day or you don't have access to a home gym. Like maybe this is a stretch of eight weeks where we just do the squat and the press and we see how far we can push those without having to, you know, spread it all across seven days or even lump it all into one, one or two days a week. So kind of like at the more dire end of running low on time, you can still move a lot of weight and getting to squat a couple of times a week is such a great training stimulus if you had to just pick it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. If I had to cut a lift, it would be the relatively low skill lift because that's the one that's probably going to come back the fastest. So the deadlift, as an example, is a pretty, it's, that's a lift that you can tend to not train regularly and still pick back up pretty quickly because it's just such a simple exercise. Especially if you're squatting. Yeah, if you take a long break from the squat, it's going to be a tough comeback for sure. Totally. Especially because of the eccentric stretch. The doms after taking a break from squat can be rough. Yeah, punishing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to keep this one short and sweet because those of you who are listening know that time is tight. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to add, Andrew? Well, I was just going to ask, at the risk of taking a little bit longer, is there anything that you do outside the gym to make the gym time fit better? You know, whether that's like prepping the outfit, prepping the snack, prepping the schedule. Like, are there any non-workout things that you do to make the workout more efficient? Well, it'd probably be having to choose between where I'm going to do my workouts. I have a home gym and then I also walk to the gym. So it might be that my workouts are going to be, I mean, I could drive to the gym, but, you know, just kind of making my commute very short. <laughs> and then maybe schedule wise, I tend to look ahead at the week and make sure that I have a spot to train on any day when I know like it's going to be a busier than normal week planning ahead if I'm going to be traveling, then I'll look in advance and find a gym where I'll be training and I'll talk to my coach so that they know to prepare for me being on the road and not having my normal training equipment. And then whatever I can say no to, to make sure that I get to train, I will say no. <laughs> and just kind of set a, set a time where it's like, no matter what, I'm going to have 45 minutes to work out. And if I can get as much done in 45 minutes that's better than nothing. And at least I get to get something done. So kind of do as much as I can to plan in advance with the location, the types of exercises I'm doing, and the amount of time that I have available to do it. And then I always have to just make sure that I have eaten enough at any time or else I will just cry and be mad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what about you? Do you plan ahead for anything like that? Oh, absolutely. And as you were saying that, I was thinking about my calendar block. I mean, I, I run my schedule for work and personal stuff on the calendar. And I have my four blocks of training that I include in my schedule and move around based on where it's going to be. And I, I think that just makes a difference in terms of my ability to get into training mentally, just minimize the changeover period because I'm planning for it. And I think that's just a helps with my consistency. Training is not a matter of if I'm going to do it. So there's no decision loop. It's more of a when am I going to do it? Totally. And then to your point, the amount of time might change, which I adjust the exercise selection and maybe how hard I go for that particular day. But getting it done right now, at least where I am with my life, the most important thing is just showing up and doing work. I, you know, hit my program probably 99% of the time, but I try, and I think this is a take-home message that I would just encourage 
the listeners out there, particularly if you have a coach, to work with your coach to not let the workout or the perception of the workout be the thing that prevents you from showing up to do the work. You know, do something, show up, let them know that you had to modify or you might need to modify in advance, but prioritize showing up and getting something done over just letting it skip because you don't think you've got it in you today. That needs to be said one more time so it sinks in. That is so important. And I think you said it really well. Don't let the perception of the workout be what stops you from doing it. That's huge when it comes to time demands, when it comes to the amount of energy you feel like you have, when it comes to pain, when it comes to a movement that you hate. There are options. Yeah, nice point. That's great. Thank you. Love it. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for listening to Barbell Logic, Beast of Burden. If you like this, we would love a review. We'd love five stars. And if you think this would be helpful to someone, give us a share. Thanks for listening. Bye.